Hey guys, welcome back to another video of Circuit Digest. So in this video, I will show you how you can build this resistor cutting machine. Uh, so uh, it was heavily inspired from a project done by Mr. Renevetu. I'll put the link for that somewhere over here. But I wanted to improvise from there. I wanted to make sure that it is easily uh, buildable and usable for most of us. So that is exactly I'm, what I'm going to show you in this video. I'm going to show you how you can build this on your own and why I made and tweaked some changes in the design. So this is Ashwinth here. Let's get started. Okay, so I am not going to build this entire machine in front of you. As you can see, it's all completely assembled. So instead, what I will be doing is I will be explaining to you the different parts of this and why it was built in such a way. Uh, the main idea behind building this was to make it easy for everyone to build it. Uh, so what I have done is I haven't used any power tools whatsoever to build it except for cutting this aluminum frame. The only machine or the tool that I used was was a 3d printer as you can see every single part here is either 3d printed or directly purchased from an online website and assembled here uh, of course apart for the electronics part so uh, let's start with explanation so uh, of course the complete uh, 3d design for this model as well as the stl files for all the 3d printed parts that you see here can be found at the documentation including the explanation for the schematics the code everything so uh, for the explaining how this entire thing works i'm going to split it into different sections so I just started with all these drawings when we first started with the mission. So I have split it into different areas. The first thing would be the base assembly. So I have used an aluminum bar. Uh, as you can see here, it is a 200 mm aluminum bar. It is called, it is 20 by uh, 40. So the reason for using this aluminum is that it helps you to mount a lot of things onto it, as well as gives a very sturdy platform to whatever you're building it. So uh, it was heavily inspired from uh, 3d printers so yeah as you can see everything on this um, cutting machine is uh, assembled onto this aluminium using these grooves and the t-nuts for those who already know it a t-nut is something which slides into this gap and helps you to mount all these things onto it so yeah, for the base, we have used this aluminum bar. And then the second mechanism would be this feeding mechanism. So as I told you, this feeding mechanism part was completely inspired by a similar resistor cutting machine built by Mr. Renovato's uh, YouTube channel. So what it has is it has a threaded rod, it has a soft shaft, it has two pillow blocks. And then on the threaded rod, we have uh, two bearings held in place. And on the soft shaft, we actually have a 3d printed roller which is used to feed the resistor into the uh, into the cutting uh, area over here so as you can see we have that threaded rod over here and that soft shaft over here both of which are 8 mm and then we have something called a flanged bearing maybe you will be able to take a better look from here yeah so this is called a flanged bearing it is a flea flow bearing, but it has some kind of flange on one side, which actually keeps the resistor in place and it avoids it from being slipping away from this uh, uh, roller area. So on the soft shaft, we have actually 3D printed this uh, roller and have used Feviquake to stick this uh, uh, pulling belt on top of it, which will be used to push the resistor strip from this end into the cutting area over here. So that's about the feeding mechanism. So these two things you see here are the guiders which guide the strip to enter exactly uh, in parallel to this uh, feeding mechanism. It shouldn't slip away and it shouldn't turn in either direction. So this guiders here will guide it directly into uh, the feeding area over here and then moving on we have the drive assembly so the drive assembly is pretty simple we have two pillow blocks over here which holds the soft shaft in place the reason for using this is that uh, the distance between this flanged bearing and this roller rubber that you see here is very crucial it has to be uniform on both the sides to maintain a uniform feeding otherwise it would go in either directions so these two pillow, pillow blocks here are uh, 
um, are held in place to make sure this soft shaft is exactly in parallel to the aluminium bar and you can easily adjust the height if needed using these two screws over here in that way you can control the gap between the flanged bearing and the rubber roller over here so that's about the feeding mechanism the drive mechanism is very very simple we have three motors all together one stepper motor is used to feed the resistor strip inside this and we have two servo motors to chop the resistor uh, once the particular counting has been done so this is a nema 17 stepper motor coupled directly to the soft shaft nothing fancy here and then moving on we have the chopping mechanism which is used to cut the resistor so that is also again very simple we have a, a 3d printed uh, a groove here through which the resistor would pop out and these two blades over here will chop the resistors once we have uh, extruded the required number of resistors. Now it took me so many iterations to figure out which angle these blades should be placed to get a 100% result every time we cut it, it shouldn't get stuck somewhere. So this angle seemed to work pretty well for me. So uh, the 3D printed uh, enclosure for the blade is still pending, it will be done. But yeah, for now it's uh, just stuck there using Fevicwake. And apart from the chopping mechanism, what I wanted to do was to make sure that I exactly cut the number of resistors equally. So if I need five resistors, I just need to chop it at every five resistor. So I have used a encoder sensor over here which is the MOC7811. So this sensor actually counts the number of resistor it passes through and then it chops it once the required number of resistors have passed through. So uh, initially the idea was not to use any feedback mechanism like a sensor here just to extrude a particular number of steps and then cut it. But then I realized irrespective of how well you design your uh, feeding mechanism, it is going to slip at some points. At some point you're going to extrude more or less and your chopping would be screwed away uh, completely. So it is very important to have a, a feedback sensor over here, at least in my case. So uh, that is about the mechanical assembly. Let me just take a small resistor strip and uh, show you how it passes through this entire thing. So here is the sample resistor strip. It actually goes into our machine from here. We just feed it inside like this. And then once it reaches here, we can manually rotate this. This is how the feeding happens. It enters into the chopping area and as you can see here, it comes into this thing. Uh, let me just get a better angle. Cut it. Okay, so now uh, the resistor is uh, exactly before the sensor. I think from this angle, you will be able to see how it is uh, being feeded into the chopping area. So yeah, uh, so what happens is we have this MOC7811 sensor. I have actually broken it to have enough spacing between both and the resistors exactly pass between the diode and the phototransistor so that we'll be able to count how many resistor is uh, passing through it. So let me just manually rotate it. So now one resistor has passed, now two have passed, now three has passed. So once we have passed the required number of resistors, we can also be able to tell exactly where our blade would chop. Would it chop between these two resistor leads or exactly on top of this resistor lead? Since we know the position of each uh, resistor, we'll be able to again take one step back and make sure the cut exactly falls between the uh, space between the two leads that you see here. So yeah, this is why the sensor was used uh, in first hand and this is how the entire uh, me mechanical parts work. For the electronic side, I have just used another aluminium bar and I have used a metal spacer, which you can see here to mount the LCD display. So after 3D printing and designing all these parts, I really lost interest in 3D printing and enclosure for the electronics. So, and I also thought it would be cool to leave it open out there. So uh, I have just used some screws and bolts arrangement to secure everything in place. So uh, for the electronics part, let's quickly check the circuit diagram. So this is the complete circuit diagram for our uh, project. 
and everything is pretty simple so what happens here is we will be using a 12 volt 2 amps adapter to power everything up and then this lcd over here will show us all the uh, required uh, infographic information we have an i2c display module to interface it with the arduino nano and then we have the a4988 uh, motor driver module uh, so the NEMA 17 motors actually have, uh, you can think of it as two coils inside. So uh, make sure to figure out the uh, ends of each coil. Actually, there'll be multiple turns in that coil, but you can think of it as two coils. So make sure to figure out these uh, uh, leads of one particular coil. You can use a multimeter to check continuity between both. And then you have to connect it between A1, B1, and then the other coil can be connected to A2 and B2. So that's what we have done here. We have connected the uh, NEMA motor to our A4988 and then we have used the 5 volts from Arduino Nano to power it. The same 5 volt is used to power the two servo motor here as well as the sensor over here. So yeah, the schematics is pretty simple. Uh, again, I will be explaining the schematics and uh, giving you a table also to follow up with the connections. You can check all that in the link given in the description of the video. We have used a capacitor here to filter out any ripples that will be created by this motor. So do make sure to use a heat sink on top of your motor driver because uh, the current consumption is almost one amps continuous and uh, you can expect it to get pretty hot. And then we have one push button here which is used to turn on and uh, used for emergency stop as well and the display which i showed you and apart from that another thing that you have to take care of is the moc 7811 uh, encoder sensor which is over here so this encoder sensor basically uh, has a photodiode and a photo transistor i didn't have the fridging equivalent for it so i showed the schematic separately but it is again very simple uh, you will have to uh, power this photodiode through a current limiting resistor 220 ohms and the collector of the photo transistor will be pulled high to 10k and you will also be getting the signal out of it which is connected to analog pin of your Arduino Nano and that is it that's all about uh, the schematics uh, as far as the code is considered the code is uh, very simple I will be explaining the code completely on the documentation because I think that makes more sense than explaining it on words so uh, basically what the code does is that once you start uh, the machine it will just count the number of uh, resistors passing through this uh, optocoupler sorry passing through this photo transistor and then it will chop the resistor uh, when the required number of resistors have passed so again uh, the complete explanation for the code the schematics uh, the stl files everything can be found at the link given in the description of this video so that is it this is how we built it hope you liked it and hope you'll be able to tweak it and use it for some of your applications as well thank you for watching have a nice day bye bye